Welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide. Today we are at Forge of the Giants, which is the very last grace in the mountaintops of the Giants, right at the Forge, funnily enough. Now we're going to speak to Melina, and that will, uh, we get to sacrifice Melina and light the, light the fire, and that will take us directly to Farm Azula. Now, just to make a point, if we were using the Frenzy Flame ending, if we had, if we had been inflicted with the Flame of Frenzy, you sacrifice yourself and not Melina. But you still get transported to Farmazula. So you don't really sacrifice yourself, you just use the flame in you or something, 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 something bullshit lore. But now we're in Farmazula, we are running to the end of this bridge that we get teleported to, grabbing a smith and stone eight, and then we're gonna uh, drop down these little floaty bits and just head into the level, I guess, picking up a golden rune nine. And um, yeah, we, we are teleported to Farmazula, which funnily enough is the episode we're doing today. So this is episode 42, so only two more parts after this. So we're just going to ig ignore these beastmen for now because there's a grace right here. We do decent damage to the beastmen, don't get us wrong, uh, so you can take care of them uh, fairly fairly easily, but we're just running to the grace because fuck it, you don't need to fight every enemy in the game. Now these beastmen can drop the beastman's cleaver, the beastman's curved sword, or the beastman's jar shield so, I'm assuming these will be the curved sword ver versions. Yeah, the the ones wielding a bigger two-handed weapon are uh, the ones holding the cleaver. The ones with the one-handed weapon are holding the sword, and you'll be able to tell the ones that can drop the shield, because, again, they are the ones holding it. So, you'll see in our physic flask, we put on a combination of the fire damage uh, tier and the tier that gives you more dexterity. Now, we need... The uh, the dexterity one specifically so we can use a weapon called the godskin peeler that we've picked up previously in the game now we're going to use a combination of the godskin peeler's weapon art plus the rot turret setup in order to defeat the next boss that's coming up because it is a, a big dragon boss and uh, it's actually it's, it's it could be well it's not even a boss actually but it's pretty difficult actually um but this method will completely fucking wipe the floor with it so obviously we've got the uh, dragon communion seal in our right hand the icon shield in our left and we're going to change some of our talismans. I think we change the uh, the uh, dragon crest one, and we switch out for the flame drake. And then I think we I think we change one more, maybe maybe not. Nah, well that's good enough apparently. So yeah, black flame tornado is specifically good against this this next boss coming up because it is a, a big dragon, but it's it's its belly is quite high up and its legs are quite thin. So trying to hit bosses like this is for me anyway been notoriously difficult in Souls games. So. For the mimic tier, we're going to make it so we can. It can. O the only castable thing is uh, rot breath, and we get the chance to summon the mimic tier before the boss shows up. So we're obviously going to do that. Now all it can do is hold the icon shield and cast rot breath, and then we're going to put the godskin peeler on our back. Uh, so we're going to two hand the godskin peeler and put the icon shield on our back, and then it is literally just a case of spam black flame tornado, and. Um, that might not look like it's doing a whole lot of damage, but I'm telling you that is doing a hell of a lot more damage than what most things will be doing. And the reason why the uh, Black Flame Tornado was so good is because it just creates this big ball of hitbox around you, so you just don't need to be accurate whatsoever. Now the uh, Mimic Tear will eventually get the rot on. Uh, the Mimic Tear will eventually get its rot breath on against this boss, and from that point onwards, it is it's, it's you know it's gonna die eventually still not done it yet but it, it will don't worry but effectively all we need to do is just uh spam this and that that is how we defeat this boss it's actually a pretty good method for defeating actually it's a pretty good method for defeating just about everything in the game as a matter of fact if you'd built for this weapon so um if you built it and you'd been building around your dexterity and maybe some levels in faith. Um, the Black Flame Tornado is one of the singular hardest hitting Ashes of War in the game. It's slow to wind up, um, but it has a massive AoE and deals a huge chunk of damage because the damage it deals is based on the target's max health, more so than the actual damage of the Ash. Um, yeah. It would be dealing more if you'd built around it, like I said, but um, at most it's going to take maybe what? 10 uses um which as you can see if it's got the mimic distracting it that's not too hard to achieve you're rewarded with an ancient dragon smithing stone for defeating it now we're just going to head back pick up the items that are in this area um we'd already picked one up a little bit further back but there's a smithing stone there there's another item on the edge which 
my brain is saying the words dragon wound grease, but I'm almost certain that's wrong. Nope, I was right. Ah, wow, your brain's very reliable. Now, specifically, the re now, given that wasn't a boss, you might think, well, why'd you do it? Well, because we got the Ancient Dragon Smith and Stone out of doing it, so it is kind of mandatory. That is a good item to pick up. And this was actually a very effective way of dealing with it. So, yeah, um, I recommend you doing that. So all you need to do is defeat the uh, the Godskin Noble? No. Godskin, it's the Godskin Apostle in the Windmill Village that drops yes. the Godskin Peeler. And that was us just putting back our standard equipment back on. Um, we decided to put the white mask on uh, because that gives you the Lord of Blood's exul exultation effect. If you inflict bleed against any enemy, it will uh, increase your attack power. So it's actually it actually synergizes with the build quite well uh, because you will now and then inflict bleed against an enemy before you kill it and get a wee attack boost, which is nice for us. So killing those two enemies. Um, just another two beast men. One of them was holding the jar shield as well, as we described, and then heading out of the window onto the little ledge and up into the rafters of this room. There's a lot of these beast men in this area. So something that could have come in handy, because some of them will be casting like ancient dragon lightning at you. Something that could have come in handy in this area uh, to avoid getting casted at and ganged up on might have been to use Assassin's Gambit because it would allow you to take care of them without needing to risk having to fight them all at once. As you can see, these guys are starting to harass you at range now. Assassin's Gambit might well have prevented that. But the cool thing is, actually, is this build is... Uh, so there's a great a great Grave Glove work, so worthwhile uh, getting that. But as you can see, actually, the, uh, the Great Stars is really good at fighting these beast men, actually. Like, really, really good. Two L1s will kill them, and uh, that's exactly where we want to be in terms of the power that we're dishing out. So yeah, yeah we're had, you this is... had you sacrificed some more stats in maybe Vigor or Endurance, you were willing to wear slightly lighter armor, you could have squeezed more damage out of them by leveling your strength even further, but where we're at right now is very, very comfortable. For sure, for sure. Now that's our Golden Rune 12 out in that balcony, and uh, if, you, if, we're, if you head northeast... Uh, that's progress to the rest of the level, but this is a little bit of a kind of item run uh, going down, because this bit eventually leads to a dead end, but there's uh, some items here, so obviously we're going to go and get them, so we're going to take the lift down, and now we're going to put on the um, the postule, I think. Oh, no, we, oh, we, we changed this for the postule, so the Prince of Death cyst, rather, sorry, uh, and this will increase our death blight resistance because there's a bunch of worm faces in this area, uh, and they're a colossal pain in the arse. But we've got Lion's Claw, so actually not so much of a pain in the ass. Um, taking this uh, this jump, it's kind of precarious because you can actually overshoot the jump if you jump too late. So you kind of want to, yeah, uh, just just be careful jumping because you can just jump off the edge of the thing that you're trying to jump to. Uh, so there's a Smith and Stone 8. And we're just going to head back. We're going to ignore that dragon. That doesn't... If it, if that dragon gave us an ancient dragon smith and stone, we would be killing it, but it doesn't. So it doesn't give you anything. So we're not going to fight it. Because if something ain't going to give us something, then there's literally no point in fighting it. So... And there we go. There's the first worm face. And... Um, I don't know why I wasn't using Lion's Claw, but... Yeah, just try and avoid its uh, stupid spit attack. Uh, it should have been... I really should have been using Lion's Claw there, because it should be like two Lion's Claw should stun it. Now, we're putting the um, the Rejuvenating Balls is on, just to completely get rid of our Death Blight buildup. But what you want to do is there's three Worm Faces down here. We're going to bait one out at a time, using the arrows, because you do not want to just run into this encounter. Uh, because you almost certainly will just get Death Blighted. So there's one Lion's Claw, it stuns it, and then one L1 is enough to stun it again. Yeah, so Lion's Claw good, in case uh, you didn't know, uh, Lion's Claw good. <laughs> How could they know? We've never mentioned it, not even once. Yeah, this is um, the first time we've mentioned Lion's Claw in this game. I didn't even know we had Lion's Claw up to this point, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, no, even the bow was doing res like respectable damage. Obviously, it's not going to be the most efficient way to kill them, but if you really are struggling with these worm faces, you can just keep your distance and pelt them with arrows. 
So now we've uh, killed two of them, we can just we don't need to bait the third one out because it is just here. Um, yeah, like you can as you can see, the the great stars are really really good at taking care of these things. But you know, if you're fighting multiple of them, it's so so risky. Um, it's like heading into a group of basilisks, but probably worse. So just stay the fuck away from its um, its stupid death blight cloud because it. <sighs> what a stupid status effect. Oh, you just die instantly, haha. -ha. Oh, epic. All the, all the instant death effects have been dumb in these games. This isn't yeah. news, but the... Um... Okay, two things I want to explain. Kill the one at the bottom of the ladder, because if you don't, you are getting death blighted on your way up. Don't kill the one at the end of the bridge, because fuck him. Grab the item and bolt. Yes. This one you might actually need to deal with, though. Yeah, because um, if he does put the death blight cloud at the... Like, as you're getting on the ladder, like, it theoretically can just fucking kill you as you're going up because you don't have enough time to escape it. Yeah, um, exactly. So you you very much want to deal with the one that's at the bottom of the ladder. If you if you ignore every other one in this area, that's fine. But kill the one at the bottom of that ladder for the love of God. Save yourself the heartache. The problem being, though, is if you don't kill the three before that one at the bottom of the ladder, they're very likely to just... The, the other three will then gang up on you as you're killing the one at the bottom of the ladder. So there's another right, Smith and right. Stone 8. The game is fucking throwing so many of them at you. And we get the Glove Wart Pickers, Bell Baron 3. And there's a big worm face. But again, we're just we're gonna just ignore these ones and get the rejuvenate. One one rejuvenating bolus in the middle of the pool. But as they weren't aggroed on us, we can just warp back to Crumbling Farmazilla. Um or whatever that bonfire's name is, but this bonfire here. And uh yeah. I think at this point we should have changed our gear back if we haven't already with a sneaky edit. But yes. yeah, you should be taking the Prince of Death assist off at this point because you're not going to be encountering Death Blight again in this area. So we're just grabbing the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book and then we're just running out. Yeah, fuck fighting everything in that room. There is absolutely no point. I have to fight this guy there. though. Yeah, so if anyone runs out then, yeah. But now you should be able to rest. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, that room is actually a total... Wow, dick! That room is a total pain <laughs> in the ass. Um, so I think now we're switching back. We're going to put on Sacred Blade. Yes. So there's a bunch of zombie beast men coming up. So Sacred Blade, good against undead. In case we had Sacred mentioned. Blade, great against undead. What do you mean, good? <laughs> oh, we had not taken off the Prince of Death cyst. We've taken it off now and we've put the, the Crimson Seed back on. So there's a Somberstone uh, Miner Bell Baron 4. I think that should allow us to get uh, Somberstones up to 8. Uh, I yes, I believe so. And now with uh, these Beast Men, just use Sacred Blade and that'll just kill them. These ones, if you're not using Sacred Blade, they will um, try to reassemble. And as a result, you have to hit the reassembling body to kill them uh, 100%. Otherwise, they'll just come back. But if you're using Sacred Blade, you can pretty much just one-shot all of them and then they won't reassemble. So Sacred Blade, very fucking good. Now, the Skeletal Beastmen, which are these guys, uh, they can drop the Bandit's Curved Sword if they're wielding it. They can drop the Grave the, the grave Scythe if they're wielding it. Uh, the Sun Realm Shield if they're wielding it. And uh, Bolts and Human Bone Swords. Yeah, functionally identical drops to the regular Skeletons. Yes, if it's the yes. same variety as the normal skeleton, it will drop the same things if it's the beast, uh, the beastman skeleton or the regular skeleton. Some golden arrows at the top of here. Um, make sure not to miss them because the white item orb silhouetted against the very light background, it's really easy to miss that, so just yeah, make sure to pick them up. Uh, and there's a couple of bigger uh, skeletal beast men in this area. And they can breathe fucking fire at you. I mean, that um, looks like it's the Executioner's Great Axe, actually. It is indeed, and it can drop it. Can they? Interesting. Yes. Yes, they can. Um, clearing up the enemies in this area, though. Grabbing this item, and I think we'll be... Are we doing the top loop first? I'm not sure what loop we do first. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Looks like we're dropping down. So we drop yeah, so down we drop... into this hole here. Grab the item at the end. And then you've got to double back on yourself and be wary of an ambush. 
yes, yes, this, this guy here. Now, those are the bandit curved swords, so that one could have dropped them. That guy really wanted to make a good first impression, and he just fucked it up. I know. It's really funny getting the backstab on them and, like, all their bones kind of fall off a little bit and then reassemble. <laughs> Uh, so that's the Golden 12, and then uh, we're gonna head up here. So <laughs> there we go, Bandit's Curved Sword. Let's fucking go. Spot on. Nice. Yeah. So clearing the enemies along the path, take this broken rubble up to the top, and there is an item tucked away at the end. I feel like it's either a big smithing stone or a big glove wart. I feel like big smithing stone. Uh, I just want to say everybody should uh, everybody should say thank you in the chat for the speed ups and the edits and at the end of it all it's a great grave glove warp. That's yeah. basically impossible for any human to say because it, it, to me it's just always going to come out as great rave glove warp but yeah, well, <laughs> whatever. Um, We're having a fucking party in this flower bed. Don't need um, to fight those beastmen. We can just drop straight back down here and then I think we're heading over to the grace over there. Yeah, that's the loop done. So we'll be jumping the gap, getting the grace, and uh, do we then drop down again? Yes. And do I the lower the... portion first? We do the lower portion first, and this is definitely correct, I think. Uh, the lower portion leads to the boss fight first, um, but by doing the lower portion, you get a you get a grace before the boss fight. If you started, if you tried to go to the boss fight from this portion this would be the grace before the boss fight so it's definitely recommended that you do the lower portion first and get to the boss that way on your way down make sure to jump the gap to that staircase because going from the platform with the grace to the platform we're on now in a single drop is just death you cannot yep. survive that fall even with the cat talisman on so these guys there's a bunch of these these are banished knights they can drop the full armor set which is the banished knight helm armor gauntlets and greaves although i think they dropped the altered version of the helm and armor and they can drop the banished knight halberd which we've already got the banished knight great the banished knight great sword or the banished knight shield so this one would drop the great sword and the shield similarly to the uh to the worm faces there's the armor the altered version Similarly to the worm faces, these are very much a case of hit him with a lion's claw, hit him with a jumping L1. So there's lion's claw, jumping L1, that's a stance break, dead. Yeah, that's your most efficient I... way of dealing with these. Now, specifically, there's two banished knights here, so you really want to kill that one as quickly as possible. Now, what I will say is that this weapon setup that we're using, uh, Azula's Beastman Ashes, just there, but this weapon setup, the, the dual great stars, is absolutely fucking phenomenal at being able to take down banished knights easily so if you don't like i said i would highly recommend uh using these weapons because they really really are that great so now we're coming up to the boss this is the grace before the boss and the boss is a, a notorious one and it is the godskin duo boss this is where you fight both the uh the noble and the apostle in one go but we have devised a pretty solid method for taking care of both of them so we're going to set up our equipment in such a way uh i'm not sure if we use the rot turret i can't quite remember but we're going to put on the fire defense talisman we're going to use St. Trina's torch because these guys are extremely weak to sleep and that gives us an item that can just sleep things and you might be thinking why didn't we use Trina's torch for the crows it's not good against the crows it does not sleep them fast enough <laughs> it's just so you're aware the bow is definitely the best version for the crows yeah, we found that out through painful, painful trial and error. Yeah. Now, indeed, you could, of course, make some sleep pots, which are also going to be good. Uh, the torch is fantastic. Now, we've also put Storm Collar on and Blood Flame Blade. That is going to be our method. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sleep these guys using pots or the torch, and then we're going to use Storm Collar and Blood Flame Blade, and it fucking melts them. So what we're actually doing, now that I remember, is we're creating the sleep turret. So we're gonna yeah. run in with a, we're gonna run in with Centrina's torch, and then we're gonna summon the mimic tier whilst we're uh, dual handing the Centrina's torch, and as a result, the mimic tier will just use the sleep ability of Centrina's torch as well as throwing sleep pots. So that is uh yeah, we're doing the sleep turret strategy for these guys. 
Now, interestingly enough, I don't know why I didn't just whip out the torch myself. Um, but, yeah, uh, Stormcaller, very, very good. Um, Would have been even better there had you not run out of stamina. Um, you could have probably finished this one off straight away. Um, yes, If probably. it does this move, get the fuck out of dodge because that hits really hard. You do not want to get caught in the whole thing. Um, Godskin Noble, just asleep over there. Not bothering yes. anybody, we've just got to fight one. When they die, keep wailing on the corpse, because as you could see there, it was still taking damage from the Mimic still hammering him as he was dying. Um, immediate transition to phase two for the Noble, and the Mimic put him to sleep again. We're going to put a fucking end to him, because he fell asleep. And this should summon an Apostle, Yes, since the so... Apostle died first. So as you can see, uh, probably, you know, you wanted to get, uh, after you've summoned the Mimic to, you probably want to have cast Blood Flame Blade as soon as you possibly can. But as you can see, this method is just hilariously good. Um, surprisingly, that didn't actually sleep the Apostle. Um, there we go. There he is. Now, now, the problem is, is that the Mimic can theoretically hit the Apostle as he's fallen asleep. And if you do that, it then stops being slept so that's a little bit annoying now i think we've got even more footage of this fight just to kind of reiterate the method um but honestly this method is so 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 good against these guys um yeah uh the putting it to sleep storm collar plus blood flame blade is really really good not only that it also works with the uh the white mask that we're wearing because that once we proc a bleed it puts the Lord of Blood's exaltation effect on and we actually get the damage increase after getting the bleed effect. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Indeed it is. Um, you already saw what the rewards were. It was one of the final bell bearings you need for smithing stones and somber smithing stones as well as the Black Flame Tornado Ash of War. So you can now put that on literally anything else. So we don't need to rely on um, the Godskin Peeler anymore for Black Flame Tornado, and I believe we make use out of that a little later on. Um, for now, though, still talking about this fight, if you can hit them with a the sleep pot and put them to sleep, one of the best things you can do, and you can do this to the individual ones and the duo fight as well, because once they're asleep, it's basically two single fights and not um, a duo fight. Yes. You can put them to sleep. sleep. Sorry, there'll be a sleep for a full minute, but yes. If you if you have enough sleep pots, the sleep turret will not be necessary. Um, yeah, you can basically solo the fight, because once it's asleep, that's it. You just do the same technique. You can use Stormcaller, you could just use charge attacks, you could use... Um, as you see in there, it broke its stance, we inflicted bleed, we're dealing even more damage because we have the white mask on. It It's just free. It's just free. If you are still struggling... Even with sleep and bleed and stormcaller and as much armor as we've got and the sleep turret and all of these things combined, if you're still struggling, if you've done the volcano mana quest and you've done it properly, uh, recusant Bernal's summon sign will be outside the boss room on the way in. So you can even the odds even further and have it be a three on two instead of the two on two that it is or the one on two that it is if you're a fucking sociopath. Now, it is possible that using a Soporific Grease would have been a good idea as well. Uh, you could do Soporific Grease plus Stormcaller, and that would also probably put them to sleep. Uh, in, in, a big, in a big fucking uh, wide arc around you, just inflict sleep. But uh, as you can see, there's, this is the method we went for. There's obviously a whole bunch of other things, but we can only show so much footage and so much time. But I think this was, the, uh, at the very least, the funnest method, as well as being highly, highly effective. Yeah, it was making light of something that, um, complete honesty, on my first playthrough, that was the boss that gave me the most trouble. 57 deaths to a single boss. It I done it first time. fucking horrendous. Kill yourself. Um, <laughs> no, so, so if you are struggling with that, I don't, I don't judge you for that, because I did too. So, we're back at the Dragon Temple, and now we're gonna just set our equipment back to what it's supposed to be. Um, so that was like a couple of things we need to change. That was like what the the torch plus a talisman, and then also putting lion's claw back on. Yeah, I think so. 
um, as well as moving the gear around to where it's meant to live in the slots that we use them for. The biggest, so just one last thing with the gods can do, the biggest problem is just if you do put something to sleep and the mimic tier hits it whilst it's falling asleep, that's the worst case scenario. But even then, um, it's still, you know, completely doable, as you can see. So if you have enough sleep pots, rather, and, uh, you, you know, the mimic tier keeps waking them up in your experience, then you can just spam sleep pots until they're both asleep, and then use Stormcall or Bloodflame Blade on one of them. Because um, the other one will definitely still be asleep by the time the other one dies in that scenario. But otherwise, we head back to the Dragon Temple and we're just kind of going along our merry way. Fighting these Banished Knights as if they're nothing. As if they're, they mean less than nothing. Easiest Banished Knights of my life. <laughs> oh, what's that? As you hit, said. Me th hit me through Lion's, Lion's Claw. Oh. Who cares? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. Lion's Claw, Jumping L1, Repost, free. Literally free. They're not a threat. This one is one of the two swords ones. Who gives a shit? Lion's Claw. Jumping L1. Second jumping L1. Fuck the repost. We don't need it. Yeah, we don't, don't need it. The, the repost is a crutch. <laughs> yeah, just wandering around this area, picking up the items on the top on the top floor. Then we'll be going down to the ground floor, picking up the items there, and then progressing on. Last thing we picked up, I think, was a stone sword key. You really don't need any more of them at this point, but the game's going to keep weighing you down with them. That's fine. That's fine. They'll probably need an amount of stone sword keys for the DLC. So now we're heading back to the Dragon Temple again, and then we're going to do the the last um, route for this bit, I guess. Yeah, like I said, do the ground floor. Um, there's not an awful lot left to do in the Dragon Temple area. So I think now we head... So we head down this way. Okay. God, I just love Lion's Claw so much. It just trivialises so much of the game. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, it so is. good. <laughs> Honestly, an attack that you can't be knocked out of. Like, it's... it's Oh, just beautiful. A part of me thinks the motion value thing is a bug. I, 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 like, I really don't think it should be doing what it's doing, but... Surely, as long right. As, as long as it is, we're going <laughs> to take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think there's uh, just a couple of small items around here. Just uh, be wary fighting this guy on this little uh, this little bit of ledge. Obviously, be wary, be wary of what? Well, Lion's Claw makes that easy, but if you're using literally any other thing, then fighting that guy on that tiny little bit of ledge might might be an issue, maybe. And now we are back at the Godskin Duel fight. Now, as you can see, there was no grace before that fight, and there was no way of getting to a grace before that fight unless you took the, the first drop-down method. So that's why we handle it that way. And now this is the, the door that leads to the rest of this area, which is that final door in the boss room. Lion's Claw staggers the beast men in a single hit. Now these guys with the little chakrams, the guys throwing the knives, they're weaker than the others, but they also move around more than the others, so they're a little bit irritating to deal with. Just keep at them. Eventually you'll catch them in the middle of an animation. And uh, while ever you're close to them, they'll just keep trying to dash away. So just be patient with them. Take care of the dogs on this platform, yeah. and then make sure not to miss the super sneaky hidden secret item. Let's see, more chakrams. Lovely. But once you close the gap, not a threat. <laughs> yeah, my palms are always sweating for this one jump. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Super hate. sneaky item, and big gap. <laughs> so that's a Heroes Rune 5, so I guess it is worth picking up. That's a solid amount of runes. And now we're just dropping down here. We're also about to get the Dragon Crest uh, Great Shield Talisman pretty soon as well. So that's quite cool. No, no, it's not the Great Shield one, never mind. Dragon Crest plus two. Yeah. Another direct upgrade to something we're wearing. Smith and Stone 7, which is very nice. By this point, you, your weapons should pretty much be fully upgraded. The game is kind of screaming it at you. Please fully upgrade yeah. a weapon, please. And you should also have all of the bell bearings at this point if you have been following the guide. 
Yes, yeah, so... So you've got no like... excuse to not have a fully, a fully leveled up weapon. Yeah, yeah. And what better weapon could you have than the dual great stars? Uh, the Blasphemous Blade, the Bloodhound Fang. Um, You're just God, wrong. so many things. Um, nah, none of them are as flexible, though. That's the thing. That's the they're thing. not none as flexible. You... None of them give you health back. Well, I guess the Blasphemous Blade does give you health back. But... Yeah, it does. <laughs> How much FP does that cost, just to make a not point? Not, not a lot, actually. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a little bit of an annoying jump. Uh, you have to, it's quite a large gap. And then, yeah, I hate this jump as well. Um, kill the dog first. Yes, kill this fucking dog first. Dear God. It's also stronger than other dogs. Now deal with the beast man. Because dealing with the beast man first means the dog gets to ambush you. And... For some reason, the combination of one big beast man and one big dog is more dangerous than the godskin duo. <laughs> yeah. And for that, we get a somber uh, smith and stone. So that's, uh, that's an ancient dragon smith and stone. Once again, uh, the game's screaming at you, please, for the love of God, max out your weapons. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think at this stage, there is a lift that takes you to, like, a... Kind of like a, not like an alternate area, but like a kind of another sort of dead end item run area that is past like this. So you need the um, the stone sword key, and then this will open the lift. Two stone sword keys, no less. Jesus, and uh, this will this is a lift to effectively this part of the level is just items and not progress. It's not just items. Well, it's also Alexander's quest as well. There we go. We can't forget the best pot boy. And the best pot boy also gives you the best fucking talisman in the game. So. One of the few talismans that's just like damage increase without any qualifier to it. Yeah, basically. There's there's no downside to using this talisman at all. So Sacred Blade um. back on because it's the skeleton beastmen. That one there would drop the grave scythe. Uh, because it's a scythe, obviously. <laughs> um. That one drops the Sun Realm shield. Big rune in the base, and this one can drop the glaive. Um, yes. Well, theoretically, anyway, um, maybe these guys don't drop the glaive despite wielding it. Um, I will say that the uh, certainly the uh, the wiki would not have would not have mentioned if that is the case or not. But yeah. All right. Let's it, assume they can. But yes, even if yes. they do, you uh, you wouldn't farm it from these ones. They're the hardest ones in the game. Go find some slightly easier ones to kill. Yeah, so if anybody can confirm or deny if you got like a if you got the gla the glaive drop or if you got the the executioner's great axe drop specifically, I'm genuinely not sure if the big beast men can drop that or not. And the wiki clearly was not very helpful in communicating that. Because I was scouring the wiki for information and I had to piece together a whole bunch of it, so. Be careful in this little encounter here because there's quite a number of beastmen. Um, yeah, there just is. Just sort of scattered lot about. It's quite easy to get uh, ganged up on here, so just be aware that you're never more than five feet from a beastman. Um, <laughs> uh, Smith and Stone Eight's there. Now, okay, just to make a point. Now, one of these uh, skeletal beastmen did drop the bandit's curved sword, so it would stand to reason that all ones would drop. The executioner's great axe, the, the glaive, the grave scythe, etc. It would stand to reason, but sometimes these games aren't consistent. So scarab here, as we're kind of going down this little slope, and that one drops a uh, lightning fortification. Now, if um, if you had the faith for that, there is a boss coming up later in this area um, that that incantation would have been incredibly useful against. But since we lack the faith, because that's not what our build is focused on, our build was focused on versatility rather than maxing out any power in any in any given stat. Um, we can't take advantage of that, unfortunately. But it would help versus the boss that's coming up. And this is a uh, dragon moon grease. It's always fucking dragon moon grease, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, if you don't know what an item is, just. Safe bet is guest dragon wound grease. <laughs> yeah. It might well be. It's either that or a fucking arterial leaf. 
Yeah, quite literally. What the fuck is that about? Uh, <laughs> so, literally uh, never used a dragon room grease, not once. Now we're heading over these runes, uh, which kind of create this sort of artificial bridge. And now again, we're heading up to more. Again, it, we're heading to a part that it just looks like you're not really supposed to get to. But yeah, we're heading over these floating runes, and here we are. We are Alexander. How the fuck he got here is a, a question in of itself. But now he wants to fight you to see who is the best. So long as you've he done got his quest correctly. He's the main character. Mm. He is the protagonist of Elden Ring. That is John Elden Ring himself. John Pot. Fucking hell, like, like, yeah, so two lines, claws enough to just fucking kill him. Which is a shame, I, I just wish that he, uh, didn't die. He should have been a boss fight. Oh, that'd have been nice, yeah. That'd have been really cool if he was a boss fight. And he's even bigger. But, yeah, so, we get Shard of Alexander for that. And that is a talisman that just increases the powers of your Ashes of War. So, that's fantastic. Because that means every Ash of War can now just hit for more damage if you're needing more damage. So you try to maximize for damage. Uh, we try to maximize for overallness. Uh, but if you're trying to just get just raw damage, Shard of Alexander goes on. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, it works with every Ash of War in the game as well. There are no limitations on that, and it is a 15% damage increase. So, heading up here, grab the Ancient Dragon Apostles cookbook. There is two beastmen floating about, and uh, I think it's two of the larger ones. Oh, no, no, it's, no, it is two of the larger ones, yeah. So, just kind of watch out. This can be... Um, I'm pretty sure I died in testing here. So, yeah, don't, I've died don't a number die of times to this exact thing as well because of that. Look at how much fire they're just throwing at you. They do a lot of damage as well. Do, they normal, do these guys normally breathe fire? Is these the only two in the fucking game? I don't remember no, the, the fire. Yeah, no, the big ones can all breathe fire okay. in this area. So, somber smith and stone eight, and then we can drop off the edge here to, uh, I think it's a smith and stone eight? Yeah! I remembered. Did you remember? Gone, gone to my head, I couldn't have told you. Oh, yes. I don't even so care you if you're just saying that to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me to know and you to figure out. Huh? <laughs> so, taking the lift down. Uh, and this head, this is putting us back into the beaten path. So from here it is progress. That was items and finishing uh, Mr. Alexander's quest. So now we are taking these curved steps down. And you you can just drop off here because there's a doorway behind us. Yeah, you, if you took the curved steps down, you'd go through the doorway. But you can just drop down from where we are. And um, speaking of sphincter tightening jumps, the... You mentioned oh. getting that Heroes Rune 5. Yeah, um, this is the yeah, worst th one. This is the single worst jump in the whole game. Yeah, God, it's awful. Look at it. fucking hate it so much. <laughs> There's no good way to approach it either. You've just sort of got to get lucky. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want it. You definitely do not want to jump too late with this one. You want to just jump very exactly early. Exactly right. You've just yeah. got to do it at exactly the right time, but that was the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two. That's a slightly stronger defense buff um, on top of what we already had. So more defense, more better. Yeah, that does. That is generally the case. <laughs> and there's nothing here, so we're just uh, killing the beast men and moving on. There's a Crucible Knight coming up, but we're just going to completely avoid it. Uh, you don't. It's not one that drops anything unique. So uh, fuck it. It can just it gets to live. Yeah, we're showing it mercy. We're not scared of fighting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite literally, actually. <laughs> like we've just decimated yeah. our way through this entire fucking game. As soon as we picked up the great stars, yeah. I don't think there's anything that's been. I mean, there's a couple of things that we like used like a slightly more efficient way of dealing with it, but like the great stars can just deal with everything. Strictly speaking, really uh, Stephen was right. He said that strength weapons are absolutely the best thing in this game, and he is f just so correct. Because normally it's dex weapons in other Souls games, but this game it's this absolutely strength weapons. Yeah, he's one hundred percent correct. Um, and it's funny as well because Faith is absolutely better than in in this game, and that's usually the other way around as well. But yeah, that tracks yeah. because Faith is just yellow strength. 
<laughs> so yeah, here we just we just uh, ignored that crucible knight, grabbed this grace, and then um, so despite saying that the <laughs> the great stars are the best weapon, right? We are putting on a curved sword because we're about to fight a bunch of warhawks, and strictly speaking, there's kind of nothing that's better for taking care of them in our arsenal than a uh, blood bloody slash. So. Um, I'm going to roll back a previous statement about 10%. Um, no, you just need to red redact all the footage uh, <laughs> of this happening. <laughs> so, I, I, I didn't see what we put on to the Great Stars there. I suppose we'll find out, but there will be a reason. So, we put on Shard of, Al we put on Shard of Alexander, that way our Bloody Slashes are going to do more damage, just in case... Uh, a bloody slash isn't enough to one shot these guys because um oh they're so annoying so a smith and stone six for some reason series of question marks jumping onto this rooftop and then there's another fucking warhawk that we're gonna kill now specifically these guys can drop the stormhawk feathers flight pinions and the warhawks uh talon which is the ones that have the swords attached to their feet they can drop that it would appear that None of them so far have had that, but there might be one or two coming up that does. So once you drop down to this lower level, sort of double back on yourself towards the platform you jumped from, and then you can wrap around the edge of the building that the bird tried to ambush you in. Um, all the way around the outside for this chest, and this is the Drake Knight set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool, weird-looking armor set that has, like, a dragon's wing for its cape. Weird fleshy, fleshy like rigid cape. It's really off-putting, but I kind of love it. Taking so, this all the way to the top, kill a single beast man, and uh, grab the lone item that's up here. Oh, Lion's Claw just putting the work in yet again. Gotta love it. You can. Uh, fun fun fact: you can jump along the edge of this building. You could see like a little lip on the edge of the neighboring building. You can jump along that to get to the resolution for Bernal's quest early. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's kind of fiddly, that. but that is something you can do. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we also absolutely shag Bernal as well, and if anybody has uh, tried to fight Bernal without wild strikes, you will know that that is... Oh, fuck it, a less than futility, that's for sure. So all this lightning damage is coming from that dragon over there. That's what's uh, casting all this shit. Luckily, that dragon is not a full power dragon, so we can kill it a lot easier than the other ones. Yeah, you really don't want to get caught out in this exact scenario, though. Getting pelted off lightning, getting hammered by a fucking eagle. Yes. Yeah. This is a bad time in general. More of them are going to swoop down from above you. There they are. Um, yeah, you super don't want to end up in this exact scenario where you're stuck on this platform. Oh my god, this is so annoying, man. Yeah. What the fuck is going on with this guy? <laughs> oh my god, I can tell you right now, I would have been so raging at this point. I can confirm he was. <laughs> and I was laughing the whole time. I was having a great time. So, obviously, if it casts lightning whilst you're about to do this jump, don't get caught in it. But now you can finally run to this fucking dragon, and luckily it's, like, easy enough to kill. Look, it's only got, like, 50% of his HP or whatever. So just hit it. You don't, you don't, don't, you know, don't need to get fancy. Just bonk it. Done. Yeah. And there is a, a good reason we're actually fighting it. Uh, not just because it's weak and we want it out of the way, but killing it rewards you with a Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. In the gazebo behind where it was standing. Up the slope from us. Um, yeah, this one here. Oh, yeah, in this gazebo um, is a, I believe, a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. So they really are screaming at you for the love of God, get your weapons upgraded. Yeah. Um, please, please upgrade that weapon, please. <laughs> uh, up onto the platform where the birds were, there is a completely superfluous golden seed. Mm -hmm. There is so no really... fucking shot. You don't have max flasks at this point, so honestly, save yourself the hassle. Don't come up here. Don't bother grabbing this. 
Yeah. Well, there is. Uh, well, there's a Smith and Stone seven, so. Okay. You can buy an infinite number of them. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, these fucking eagles again! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gandalf, you can stop whistling for him now. <laughs> yeah, please, there's please two, stop. Two, two eagles. <laughs> So now we're going to do a series of drop-offs off the edge here, which, um, again, one of these points in the game that just doesn't look like you're supposed to be here, but, you know, it kind of, to me it feels like this looks like you're going out of bounds in any other game, but you're, you're not. This is where you're meant to go. And uh, this leads up to, I want to say it's the Bolt Drake Talisman? Plus two? I think, I think you're right, yeah. God, see if I'm right. Um... I'm so proud of my brain. Yeah, I, I'm fairly confident you are correct, so anticipate serotonin, young one. Ooh. Um, Potential yeah. serotonin, almost as good as real serotonin. But, uh, almost. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, go in round 12 and up the ladder. I'll give you, I'll give you 50 quid if you can tell me what's in this coming chest. What's in that chest? I'll tell you really f <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> dra dra the Dragon Tower Shield. Um, probably the best great shield in the game, excluding the uh, Fingerprint Stone Shield. I just hate how confident you were that I wasn't going to know. <laughs> I knew full way. I, I would be willing to bet money that you forgot there was a chest there. <laughs> Actually, no, I... Wait. If you said, if you asked, is there a chest there? I would have said yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this next level encounter we're going to be doing, we are going to just be avoiding the enemies. Um, it's a crucible night, and he's just fucking wailing on some beastmen. You know what? This ain't our problem. Uh, we don't have a we we don't have a, a fucking a stake in this bet. So just ignore it. Up the ladder. Uh, we don't need to fight any of that. They don't drop anything. The Crucible Knight doesn't drop anything. And trust me, I checked. That Crucible Knight is fucking solid, by the way. So just, just completely ignore it. It's not worth it. And uh, we crushed every bone in that poor eagle's body. And now we can actually finally start progressing. I hate this bit of fucking farm as well. I hate this bit so much. But you did but get we... the Bolt Direct Talisman plus two. So I did. return and acquired. Oh, I can feel it. It's really good. <laughs> Wrap it around so, the uh, the back of the structure we were just in. There's a bunch yes. of beast men going to be laying on the ground. Um, don't be fooled; they will all stand up. So just kill them as you go past. Or yeah. if you're speedy enough, you can just run past all of them. Now the thing is, is that they're because they're all like asleep. If you lion's claw them, it'll do more damage to them, so they'll die in one's line, one lion's claw anyway. So, that Not one to mention that, that I think we still have the shard of Alexander on. Uh, yeah, probably, actually. There we do. So you are dealing chunky damage. Mm. Ooh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> yeah, no. You know what? Using Lion's Claw never gets old. It's just fun 100% of the time. Because you're like, yeah, oh, there's another never. enemy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, another enemy that gets staggered in two of these. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a game of seeing how many hits it takes to stagger them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear this yeah, next room's think... a bastard by the way yeah it is because it's, there's water in it and then there's fuckers that cast lightning but we're just going to grab the somber stone uh, miner's bell bearing 5 and then just fucking ignore the rest yeah because we're so close to a grace that honestly you'd be risking fighting them in that room losing all your runes losing all your progress when you could have just run straight past them and hit the next grace. It's not worth fighting them. So now we're about to... So we're going to rest this grace, obviously. But now... I don't know why I didn't stop at it, I don't know. But now we're going to finish off Bernal's quest, I think. And then from that point onwards, there is... Yeah, we're doing that. Uh, and then after Bernal, there is two bosses to do. Um, both of which... Well, I don't find one of them particularly hard. But the other one, um, I think one of them definitely can uh is is pretty hard very very tanky but don't worry we have two methods uh for that boss for your uh watching pleasure oh yes and there's some cool techniques coming up 
Um, some interesting, oh, yeah. like, stacking of strategies that goes on. Um, did you edit my uh, banal killing? Oh, shit, I didn't. We'll do that. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're just going to kill these beast men because we... I don't know if they do wake up if you start fighting Bernal, but let's not take that risk. Oh, yeah, no, we are taking that risk. No, right. <laughs> no, only one of them's alive, I think. Oh, okay. You don't take any damage from that fall, so just jump off, don't climb the ladder down. It's a waste of effort. And in this so, spot here, Rakus and Bernal will invade you. It is your last interaction with him, and he is a fucking bastard of an NPC yeah. fight. Uh, luckily, Wild Strikes makes him extremely easy, or rather, compared to what he would be without Wild Strikes. Honestly, go go and uh, try and fight him without Wild Strikes. Uh, absolute nightmare, because he deals uh, so much damage. But, we get to use Wild Strikes. Also, just want to make a point, thank you Halvatron for this tip. Thank you Halvatron indeed, but you're about to see a slightly different method for taking care of Bernal, and this is from the run I did parallel to our actual guide run. Now, using that uplifting aromatic was a mistake, because it meant I didn't have enough blue juice to just do this outright. But if you're using any kind of colossal sword, and you stun him with an R2, you can just chain Giant Hunt into itself, over and over. So stun him with an R2, chain Giant Hunt, and uh, if you can do it right, Goodbye, Bernal. See you later. Easiest way to kill him, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we got... Uh... Oh, I can't remember what I got from that. You know what I got from the that. Beast Champion's armor set, the Devourer's Scepter, which is the last of the legendary weapons you need for the trophy. You also, I believe, got the Blasphemous Claw which yes. is a weapon or a tool you can use to help you beat one of the bosses in this area. And as soon as we've dealt with these beastmen, uh, these are the cleaver-wielding and shield-wielding beastmen, um, trying whatever... out for Airful Strike there, didn't work out. Nah, <laughs> now it whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, these specific beastmen in that room are actually so difficult, I don't know what the fuck it is, I feel like they're stronger than the other ones, maybe I'm just fucking wrong, but like... They really hit, like, stupidly hard, and there's three of them, and I... That plus Bernal is just... They're really like, haha, well, let's try and kill him. Yeah. But Your, but, your award yeah. in this chest is the Old Lord's Talisman. Um, it's a depiction of the other boss in this area. <laughs> and it extends the length of spell effects. So if you so, cast Golden Vow, it now lasts a bit longer. That's nice, that's pretty handy. So now, this is the uh, the build setup that we're going to be using for the next boss, which is very similar, actually, to um, the... Uh... Actually, is this the build we're going to use? Yeah, I believe so. Is this it? Really? Yeah. Wow, so it's uh, apparently it is exactly the same build we're using, except we're using the Claw Talisman, and uh, that's pretty much it. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, because we tested so much against this boss. And we determined that as long as we had enough stamina, hence the need for the stamina tier in the physics flask, we had frostbite, bleed going, and a boost to your jump attack damage, as well as a boost to your physical damage from the, uh, the white mask. You have stacked enough to be able to outpace anything he can do to you. So, uh, just to be clear, we are also, um, the Physic Flask has the, uh, in the, the stamina, either stamina, like more stamina or stamina, faster stamina recovery tier, and also we've got the tier that boosts just general damage negation, uh, because this boss can certainly put out a, a lot of, a lot of damage for sure, but now we are going to do, uh, Placidious Axe. And to get to it is extremely, like, you would never, I don't know how anybody ever discovered this, like, genuinely. Um, but you have to come to this little bit of ledge here, and then carefully drop down. And then this now certainly feels like you're out of bounds. Like, I think anybody would be like, this definitely feels like not part of the game. Uh, but it is, actually. So you want to take this uh, kind of stepped floating rocks all the way down. 
and then there's a little bit that you can lie down at and it will teleport you to Placidius X's boss room. Um, now the cool thing is, is that this particular uh, setup of um, items is not deviating from the build very much whatsoever, but we do have Frostbite on our left and Bleed on our right. Uh, so we're not using Blood Flame Blade. We're also taking advantage of uh, Crag Blade on the offhand to increase the amount of stance damage we will be doing with our jump attacks, as well as increase the physical damage that the uh, the Great Stars itself will deal. So you can get about this close to it, and you can see him hovering there, you can get about this close to him before he starts the fight, which is why we stop there, and that gives you the maximum amount of time on your buffs before they yes. will uh, run out in combat. So, so we put Crag Blade on the left hand, and then we put Golden Vow on, and then all we're doing is just jumping L1s. And we're going to try and stay away from its lightning attacks. We also put in a Lion's Claw now and then. Uh, but really, the a lot of the other techniques we had involved spamming. And uh, actually, you get more value out of um, doing a hit, avoiding the lightning, doing a hit. And uh, yeah, so that way we got a... I think we got a bleed off there. Maybe we get, we'll get like a frostbite soon. But as you can see... Doing it this way, we can get them down to half HP, and generally speaking, this is as good as you can get, because every time you get him to half HP, um, he will teleport away. So then he starts yeah. flying in and starts doing these like teleport and swipe attacks. So just uh, you know, be aware of that and avoid them. Get your hits in whilst you can. But as you see, the mimic tier is doing some pretty solid damage as well. Yeah, definitely not slacking. Um, taking this window of opportunity to reapply your buffs while he's in his thundercloud form. That can be kind of difficult to dodge. Um, so that being said, any way you could boost your lightning damage negation would be beneficial here. Um, be very careful of this. Um, this big lightning bolt attack does something very cool. It mutes the soundtrack for his fight. Um, so it's quite an interesting audio experience there, but try and stay out of the radius of that. We're getting another stance break, and we're just taking this opportunity to lay into him. You would be doing more damage if you were hitting his heads at this point. But that is a solid method for dealing with the Dragon Lord. There are a couple of other things you can do to make your life easier in this situation. So when he goes into his second Thundercloud form, he can uh, hit you with a big laser breath attack if you get near a wall when he does that. Um... If you find yourself near the wall when he teleports into you after being um, in the air, you can end up behind him, and the laser breath does not hit behind him. So you can just absolutely lay into him the entire time. There's a big window of opportunity to get damage there. So here's the and... second method, and we're using the Black Flame Tornado on the Banished Knight's Halberd. We've got Shard of Alexander on. We'll put the Lightning Defense Talisman on, and we're also using the, um, the Icon Shield. Now, this method, we're also using Tish instead of the Mimic tier. Now, strictly speaking, this is uh, this is more of a free damage, quote-unquote, rather than the other version, which was also using free damage, but we're focusing on Bleed and Frostbite and Stance Breaks to get our free damage in. This one is more focusing on, like, health drain effects. Um, obviously, you could combine these two if you really wanted to. You could use Tish whilst you're using the... The, the great stars or whatever kind of dealer's choice but this is just another version that from all our testing was one of the more reliable methods now you want to make sure that you've dodged his lightning damage his lightning attack first before you start spamming this this version the main downside to this particular uh, strategy is the fact that you're probably going to get hit with a lot of his attacks because you have to stand in one place a lot um but, you know, there we go. We managed to get him down to about half, half HP, which was similar uh, in terms of what we got him to in the, the last the last version of the strategy. I cannot believe fucking dodged that. That was insane. <laughs> <laughs> you can also eat something like a lightning-proof dried liver. That will give you some increased lightning defense, so those big bolts will hit you as hard. Um, do not use an iron jar aromatic you will get fucking one shot by his lightning attacks. But here we might be seeing what I was describing, where 
we have taken him potentially over to the edge of the arena. And after doing his uh, final thundercloud form where he's in the sky, the reason I'm calling it that, by the way, is because the um, Ash of War of the weapon you can get by trading his Remembrance in um, is called Thundercloud Form, and it basically does exactly what he does when he goes into the air. Um, you could increase the potency of the Black Flame Tornado by stacking things like the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Fire Physic tier, which I do believe we are using. Here you can see, does his big swipe. Is he going to do his breath? Now, I, I don't know if he does. We've gotten particularly unlucky with Tish not getting a destined death off against him. I really don't like. I really don't understand why he's taken so long to actually hit him with that attack. There we go. Finally got a destined death off, and now his health will obviously drain at a fucking inordinately fast pace. There's a second destined death he got off on him, and as you see, Tish is just a third one. So Tish right there took about a third of his HP off in about ten seconds. Yeah, that's the beauty of uh, this technique is because it relies on the max HP of the boss and Placidus Axe has so much HP, you can deal a lot of that damage very quickly by using Destined Death and Black Flame. So just um, speeding up us putting the original equipment back on. Personally, I do think that the Great Stars version is a little bit better because it allows you to go get a hit in, reposition, get a hit in. And uh, being able to stance break Placidus Axe twice in a fight is actually kind of impressive. So... Uh, yeah, I think that the you know if you're using great stars, probably go with that method. Uh, tried wild strikes, tried other methods, uh, tried storm caller. Genuinely, just nothing was better than just jumping L ones and lion's claw. So now we're up against uh, the second boss. Actually, I forgot there's three here, um, and this is another draconic tree sentinel. I suppose it's not technically a boss, but it's sort of a boss because it was a boss earlier in the game, and um, it's just kind of hilarious how funny Lion's Claw is against this guy. Uh, he's not having a good the time. The buffoon is flummoxed. Like, it, it, he can do nothing. He will do yeah. nothing because he can do nothing. Um, <laughs> blood flame making him bleed mid-attack, so it staggered him. Lion's Claw staggering him again. The big hit from the L1 staggering him. He's just dead. He's just yep. dead. Like, that... He's a non-issue, you get the malformed dragon set, you're never going to wear it because it's fucking hideous. Um, yeah, that that enemy is not a problem if you are using a great stars with Lion's Claw. Uh, so now we're heading back to... Um, so now we're, putting the, we're heading back to this grace, we're swapping the, the defense uh, talisman out for the, the Halid Drake plus two, which is light the defense. Um, probably that would have been the best defense talisman to have against Placidusax. I'm not sure if we had that on both times, but the light and defense no, no, talisman... No, 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 no. No, no. That's the holy defense. Oh, this talisman. is the holy that defense talisman. Sorry. Yes, because this next boss can spoiler alert, deal destined death to you and destined death deals holy damage. So right. you want to be able to resist as much of that as you possibly can. But for Placidusax, the lightning damage one would probably be the best one because you're getting hit with his lightning attacks more than anything. So, yes. now it's now it is uh, Grank or um, fucking, what's his face? Malekith. Malekith, the Black Blade. And this is another boss that I personally have never had an issue with because you can stack so much damage on him using the Great Stars, it's just not even fucking funny. Um, Lion's Claw, just hit him. And when you get, and when you get him to half HP, he will turn into a different form. But funnily enough, he still has half HP. So, can I get away from him, make a little bit of space, get Blood Flame Blade on, and uh, just start pumping Lion's Claws in, and once you get the opportunity. Uh, keep us, keep watch of your HP, because obviously he does have HP draining attacks, he dances about a hell of a lot, but you know what, he can be bled, uh, he can be hit with a Lion's Claw, and that is good enough. Oh, look at that, you're staggered off two Lion's Claws. Oh, look at that, you're basically fucking dead. Without this setup, I will say, Malekith the Black Blade, I would argue, is a contender for the hardest fight in the game. Because of the amount of destined death he has. He moves about a lot, he deals a lot of damage. Um, and it's damage because it's percentage-based that you pretty much can't avoid. Um, 
you can't mitigate the health loss from Destined Death. Which no. is what makes him such a pain in the ass to fight. So, to be clear, um, I actually realised that the the Golden Vow didn't hit the Mimic tier there. I think I've done it too early. But hmm. this is just the same exact strategy, just to show you that the first one wasn't a fluke. Um, just two lines, Claws, Stagger, Garank, get a few hits in, get him to half HP. And the build that we're using is not... We, everything, nothing requires any amount of farming. This whole setup is very easy to get. Um, everything's just lying on the ground, essentially. And, uh, yeah, so... Obviously, uh, we've got the... I, I, presumably the HP regen would be the best thing on the Physic Flask. But this guy's poise can just be broken so easily that it's kind of the best way of dealing with him. Lion's Claw, break poise, he's not moving, get your damage in and he'll die very quickly. That's kind of the strategy and I think ultimately it, it works. Now you see, you haven't seen him do, I would argue, his deadliest attack in either of these clips. It's the one where he jumps is... and stabs into the ground, right? Yeah, the fucking thousand cuts. He yeah. swipes a couple of times, does a front flip, stabs the blade, and it, uh, yeah, creates this big aura of damage. After defeating him, you get an automatic cutscene that takes you straight to Lindell, the Ashen Capital, by the way. But this is not yes. the area we're doing next. So, effectively, uh, that is a point of no return. If you defeat Malekith, it will change uh, Lindell to Ashen Lindell. So, you very well could argue that doing Faramazula is the last area that you should do however the halig tree is a lot harder so personally i feel like it makes more sense to just do it in this order um even if it is a point of no return so we've headed back to uh, jarberg we've spoke to the jar baron and now if we've done everything correctly uh after defeating alexander anyway this should progress dialysis quest and now he's dead so now we warp back to jarberg again because these quests are insane i don't know why they're set up like this but now um after speaking to the Alos and him dying, uh, Jar Baron will be trying to eat him, I guess. <laughs> you know what? If I, if Di if I knew Dial Di Alos and he died, I'd try to fucking eat, him, eat his body as well. Fuck him. But um, <laughs> uh, now we walk back for a third time, and now we get the Hoslow's Petal Whip, which. Do we not already have two of that? We already have one of that. You get one from Juno Hoslow, you get a second from the Alos. You can get it early from the Alos by killing him at any point. But if sure. you complete this quest, you also get Dialysis' mask, an alternative headpiece for the Hoslo armor. So now we will speak to Jarburn, give him the uh, Alexander's insides, and uh, then we need to warp back yet again, speak to Jarburn, uh, Jarburn, and he will give us the... Um... Oh my god, do we need to warp back again and speak to him? For fuck's sake. Yes, then we need to warp back again, speak to him, warp back again... And then we get the companion jar, which I think boosts the damage of Pot's Throne. Yes, correct. And now that we have been to Farm Azula, it comes up with a message. There's an item that we can we can get from uh, the Twin Maiden Husks. Now the reason why it says that is we can't get. Normally we would get that item from Gideon, but obviously um, he's dead now that we've done. Because basically, if you go to Farm Azula and then come back he'll give you an item, but if you finish Farm Azula, he'll die, so he can't give you the item, but now you can just buy the item from the Twin Maiden Husks. And, uh, that's it for Farm Azula. We've done everything. And okay, there we go, that's Farm Azula. Done. Join us in part 43, where we're going to be doing Nicola's Halig Tree. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out, and if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.